So what is stream processing? As the name itself indicates, stream processing has two words in it, stream and processing. Basically, we have some stream and we need to process that and that's what it is, stream processing. Mostly, this refers to real-time processing. So what it means is we have a stream of messages coming in and then we need to process them in near real-time or real-time to create the meaningful outputs based on our business requirement. So to give some example, uh, there could be some of the alerting system itself. Um, say, yeah, let's take the server for instance. You have a lot of logs, log files or something which are keep on appending the logs, right? So we just need to have a monitoring system where we need to keep on processing uh, to understand the information of how many uh, successful uh, you know, requests and response and how many 404s, um, sorry, 404 or how many 500 errors um, as such. So how do we do that? So we can't just do that in one machine because we, in our application, we might be running tens and thousands of servers. In that case, in one machine, collecting all of these logs in real time and processing it will be hectic process. So what we do? is we go for stream processing. So let's think, okay? We have hundreds of files which are there in different servers. Now, how do we basically get 200s and 400s in real time? So one way is we'll need to have a system which basically keeps on reading and push it to one particular data structure, what it is. So we need to have some sort of queue data structure. It could be any, you know, MQ, uh, message queuing system or let's think it is Kafka for now. So what is Kafka? Think it as, okay, you guys know queue data structures like, right? This is simply queue data structure, but it is scalable and distributed and reliable. Okay, this is, think it as a queue, like stack and queue, right? Simply this is a queue from where our stream processors will read the messages. Don't worry about how we are fetching this information and all. There is some system which basically keeps on reading the new log lines in all of the machines and it is pushing it to your queue data structures and the rate at which it is pushing is basically like thousand uh, messages per second or thousand log lines per second. How do you process it? With a single machine, it is very difficult to process all of this thousand uh, you know, messages per second because every line we need to parse it for the time you know, for the, you know, response code, for the message and everything. So it will be difficult. So now how do we problem? Again, we have to use the distributing, uh, distributed computing. Basically, we will have to have so many machines um, in uh, to process that. And who will basically distribute that work? Again, we'll have to have a master or driver as such where it receives the information and it doesn't do the computation, but it knows what are all the jobs we need to execute? Basically, I need to count. So, so this basically driver knows what are all the jobs I need to execute. So there is job one, there is job two. Basically job one says you need to count 200, job two says you need to count 500. So now just this machine can't do it. So what this guy do is, this guy basically maintains all of these machines which basically computes and then it keeps on, you know, it sends the jobs here. So the job, when we send it to execute it, basically we call it as task. So one and two, it tells this executor, you execute one and two. Maybe these machines have less power, so it just tells you execute one, you execute two, and you execute one and two. And it also distributes the messages as and when it appears um, in the driver. So driver basically keeps on receiving the messages and keeps on pushing it to these, uh, you know, executors. Uh, and they will they will basically process. And once they process it, maybe we'll need to write it to one centralized storage or the database. Um, basically, like okay, the at time ten o'clock zero seconds, um, we saw two hundred. How many? Say two thousand. So or maybe nine hundred requests. At same ten o'clock, we saw hundred. 500s, something like that. And every second, it will be keep on 1001, 200 how many, 1001, 500 how many. So everyone will be keep, will be basically incrementing or writing into some storage system to understand the analytics as such. 
So this is how it works. Uh, basically Spark does as a micro batching where instead of pushing each, taking each and every messages and pushing, it basically waits for some seconds. Say it waits for two seconds and collects all of the messages which came. Say maybe uh, if it is coming at thousand messages per second, basically all, it collects all of the two thousand messages and then it micro batches this and it converts it as one kind of uh, you know a data type called as RDD. So that is resilient distributed data sets. So there is advantage of this, like what, what happens is uh, it has the reliability even if some machine fails, the data, the data can be recovered. So it, ha it will basically keep the duplicates of data in different machines as well. So that advantage is there. It basically, for, for you guys to understand, it basically does the micro batching of, uh, for two seconds and collect all of that information and keeps on sending it to machines to process. And that's how it basically works. Um, so every time the messages keeps on coming, the driver will collect it and send it to a lot of machines and then the machines will process and keeps on writing uh, that information to some file or database or somewhere. Um, that's how. Maybe if tomorrow this rate increases to 4000 per second. Now what we need to do, we don't need to worry a lot, we just need to add more machines like here. The executors, we need to add more machines so we have more computing power and the driver will take care of distributing the jobs to those machines um, also. So you need to execute one and two tasks, one and two tasks, um, one job and second job or whatever. So and also it takes care of you know, sending the uh, messages to those machines as well. And that's how the you know, stream processing basically works. So anything you see, uh, the alerting systems for, for that matter, or you know, real-time monitoring system. So we saw the micro batching based stream processing. There are other type of stream processing as well, like Apache Storm and Concord.io. These were the framework where basically they implemented this way. What happens is every node basically you see here um, is something like these are called as operators. What is an operator is basically a piece of code where basically you write it. It has some predefined methods to it. Basically, it has in it um, where basically whatever you write it here, when the operator fresh, freshly starts, all the code which you write inside basically executes. And there is obviously exit. So whenever it is going to be stopped or killed, that's going to be executed. Uh, and there is one thing called as uh, receive. This method will be called every time when there is a message received to that particular operator. So in the stream processing, basically I said, in this is like a queue uh, data structure and you will be keep on receiving the messages. In this case, let's take the same example. You will be receiving the log lines of all the servers. So in that case, every time when the log line is received uh, for the first time, um, what we, our goal is, if it is 200, we just need to count the number of 200s and write it to DB. If it is 500, there are two conditions again. If it is 500 or if it is 503, we need to do something. If it is 504, we need to do something and then write it to 5. So I don't know what, but just to give an example. So now how do we do that? So first I will have to write an operator which basically receives and decides whether it's 200 or 500. So this operator's work is just that, whether to decide it to 200 or 500. So if 500, send it to this queue. So every line in here is basically like a queue data structure but not here, it's basically making a call to DB and write it here, and here making a call to and write it to a file. So, but between operator, whatever it is, it's all like a queue data structure. It could be Kafka, it could be RabbitMQ or something like that. So once it receives a, a line, um, it basically does, executes the code inside this receive function, and then checks uh, according to the business logic here, if it is 200, it writes that message to the queue or the operator itself. So every operator has a name. So they may, maybe we call this operator as one, two, and three, four, and five. So if it is 200, I just need to emit that message to operator two. So the framework internally handles that message into the queue, and then it will be transferred to operator two. And in the operator two, we have some logic. It will be basically executed for every message. If it was a 500 line, Basically, we need to parse it and see the response code. If it was 500, it will be sent to operator 3. And 
internally automatically it will be pushed through the queue data structure and that message will be going to the operator three and from three again we can write our own you know uh, business logic and there we will have to do check that if it is 503 exactly write it to operator four it will go here and then otherwise it will go to here and then they write it to file in some format so this is how the other uh, strategy but here how do we scale it maybe the parsing is taking more time uh, in here maybe it's not so how do we scale it uh, so basically we'll have to create partitions uh, in the queue data structures there is something called as partitions uh, the more partitions you create the streams will be the stream of messages will be divided into two, those partition and there is no duplications and you can scale this operator to n numbers so basically you'll have more operators of same kind and you basically have four partitions created every message every stream data it basically appears here one message will go here and one will go here and the next one will go here and the next one will go here so there is no duplication but still all of the operator were still able to consume and scale and they will be still behaving the same way how i explained if it is 200 it will be sent it to here if it is 500 it will be sent it sent it to here and again if this is to be scaled again we'll have more operator of the same kind and it can be scaled so this is one way of uh, you know uh, uh, distributed computing or stream processing also uh, you can you can check the Apache um, Storm architecture. Apache Storm architecture. Basically, this is how it works. Uh, I think I have explained uh, most of the basic concepts and the generic patterns which we use it in distributed computing. Uh, next, let's in the next video let's learn about distributed file systems.